What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Cam ATL and welcome back to another MLB DFS video with your boy. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys for joining me as always. I am back with another video. I know I haven't been super duper consistent with doing these just because we have so many videos going on right now. And during baseball we have some kind of lunchtime slates at times. And when we have early slates I'm latched in and uh, locking in on the slate early on so I don't really have time to get the videos out but at the end of the day here we are we have a main slate uh, that will be at 540 Central today for baseball. We've got a five-gamer. Uh, we've been on absolute fire both sites DraftKings, FanDuel. We have been on point. It is going to be a huge baseball season. The start of this year has been wild um, so I'm excited for what's to come. I'm excited for our upside. I'm excited to see how many takedowns we get this year. I'm just excited about it. I'm locked in right now. So I'm excited to get straight into this core. Let's go ahead and get straight into it, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me and let's get to it. So first and foremost, let's look at this slate. And let's take a look at what we're looking like here. So first things first, you're going to have a couple teams that are going to have majority of the ownership, Toronto and St. Louis. Um, that being because Vegas has them as the two top total teams. Um, and so obviously by just common way of how people play DFS, Toronto and St. Louis will be heavily owned. Now on a five game slate and with it being baseball, um, I'm going to be that guy who tells you, hey, you know, get some P I'm not saying fade those pieces entirely. But get different where you can because it's only five games. Take that shot, man, because if you stack Toronto and St. Louis tonight, there's not, there's not going to be anything unique about you. You know what I mean? Uh, literally. You might be in that position where, you know, you're so alike everyone else that there's just nothing you can do to really cash or you're splitting a ton. You know what I mean? Because everyone's on the same strategy. Um, the best move to go with here. Um, would kind of be getting a little different, you know, getting some Cincinnati, who's a who's an offense I really like today, getting some San Diego, which is an offense that I really like today, kind of two low owned spots, um, even Milwaukee, you know what I mean? Like there's some spots on this slate that definitely could be big um, spots and sprinkling in a few of these different spots will definitely make you different because everyone's probably Toronto St. Louis today so immediately that makes me want to be different and go different spots and that's one of the reasons why I have so much success in baseball I'm not afraid to fade those super high owned spots because it is baseball and I understand that things happen and things don't always go how Vegas expects them to be um, majority of the time things don't go the way Vegas expects them to be so uh, let's go ahead and get into this slate kind of break down what we're looking like so far as you can see the top two pitchers that we have here projection wise and as I've always said man get your pitching right and then work out to hitters um, because at the end of the day you can still get these 2k something guys who can hit you home runs in your in your in your bats and bats are so up and down like if you're playing GPP only then you can take a little less effort on you like you can focus a little more on hitters at that point because hitters can get you two home runs and really raise huge upside if multiple guys get multiple home runs in your lineup right so you can spend more time on the hitters in if you're playing just crazy tournament max entering um going wild but outside of that um you really want to focus on your pitchers to get consistent cash that's just the the number one rule in mlb dfs so bassett and lodolo are the two guys that i'm focused on today um, both are in fantastic spots here. Um, Lodolo's at home in Cincinnati. Great spot against Philly. Uh, Philly's been not very good versus left-handed pitching so far this year. They're missing some key bats in that offense, so they're just not at 100%. And Lodolo's got a solid K rate. I believe he's projected to get more Ks than anyone else on the slate today. And Ks are king in MLB DFS. We already know that. All right. Chris Bassett. Chris Bassett is in a fantastic spot at home in Toronto against Detroit, which once again, Detroit is just not a very good offense this season. They're striking out a good bit. They're not just they're just not really good, period. And Bassett just pops as me as a very solid pitcher to pair up with the high K Lidolo um, as just a solid spot. Chris Bassett has like what? Second highest K projection total. It's like Lidolo number one, and then you got Bassett and Joe Ryan and Montgomery kind of in that second tier. 
You know what I mean? But Bassett's going to be the guy that I roll with. I also think there should be some easy dubs for both teams. I think Cincinnati gets the win, and I also think Toronto gets a W here. So I, I like them getting their win bonus as well. And both offenses don't really do a ton of damage on a usual basis, so they should be able to pitch deep as well. So love both of these pitchers to start the day off. All right? Now, when it comes to hitters, I've got some value hitters that are really popping for me today. Um, first guy that I'm going to talk about is Spencer Steer because I talked about the Cincinnati offense today um, going against the lefty falter. Uh, it's a solid spot for many of these Cincinnati bats, plus their prices are very, very good. You get Steer at 3K, who's been one of the better bats this season versus left-handed pitching. Very, very solid bat versus left-handed pitching. If you look over... Um, if you look over his career, right, against Falter, he's already smashed Falter, right? But against lefties, he's got a 276 ISO and a 427 Woba, 310 batting average. Dude's just overall consistent and solid. And at 3K, he should be a focal point for you when it comes to value in your lineups to be able to make other things work. So I love Steer. I think Steer's in a fantastic position, um, and I'm definitely rocking some Steer. And, and Cincinnati's a very sneaky stack today as well. Um, one of the guys I'm going to rock with is Juan Soto because when it comes to the spend-ups, I just feel like there's going to be more people on like the Paul Goldschmidt's, Vladimir Guerrero's, Bo Bichette's, those kind of guys, than there will be Juan Soto. Juan Soto has been incredible this year as well, once again. He's got the lefty-righty matchup today against Milwaukee. Fantastic spot for him here at home in San Diego. Dude's been hitting the ball very, very well. He's up there with all these other elite options on this slate, but yet should come in at lowerish ownership. You know what I'm saying? So I absolutely love this spot. Did I just turn my volume down on this? I don't know if this makes any difference. Anyways, um, but yeah, so super excited for Juan Soto because I feel like we might be able to get some lowish ownership here, and he's been one of the more consistent bats. We know how consistent he is. He's a dude who doesn't really strike out much. He's going to get on base most of the time. Um, and at the end of the day, really, I mean, you could get a two out of one of these guys, and depending on what the other guys do, if they do nothing, you still are in a good spot. So it's baseball, man. That's the, that's the fun part about baseball is you really don't have to have everyone fire on all cylinders to be able to still make money. Um, and so, but Juan Soto's in a great spot to do that, though. And San Diego's another stack that I think is interesting today as well. And last but not least, I am going to get a sprinkle of Toronto. And that's going to be one of the better priced options on this offense is Dalton Sh Varsho. <clears throat> Varsho, to me, here's my thought process, right? If you're going to get involved in Toronto, you're going to spend money, plain and simple. These guys are going to be, uh, you're going to spend a bit of some cash on these guys, okay? Um, Dalton Varsho, though, is a guy batting in the heart of this Toronto order. He's been having a solid season so far, solid overall. He's always had the solid power versus right-handed pitching. He's facing Turnbull, solid matchup for sure, at home in Toronto. And you get a piece of that top total, that high ownership stack, at only 4-1. So you're getting more of the focal. Like when it comes to Toronto, this is like my focal point guy here. Like I'm starting it out with this guy because he's got so much upside and in such a great spot and his price is just way too low. Um, so I really like this price for him at 4-1. It gets me exposure to that top total, but yet I'm not full on stacking like all these high owned guys are. I'm getting sprinkles in of other offenses that I love as well. So once again, the idea on this slate, obviously get your pitching right. Bassett and Lodolo kind of feel like the really solid options. Other options, obviously, Jordan Montgomery and Joe Ryan, you can you can entertain. Um, Joe Ryan in New York is a little bit iffy, though. I'd stick with kind of Montgomery and up here. Montgomery, Lodolo, Bassett. It's kind of the core that I'm interested in using there. Um, so and when it comes to the hitters, um, if you're the type of person that really locks in on wanting to make sure you're getting like a five-player stack, a three-player stack, like you're trying to really um, make sure you're stacking heavy, then it is definitely interesting to get off the high on Toronto, St. Louis, and maybe stack some Cincinnati, stack some San Diego, Milwaukee, um, these kind of teams who are also in great spots but kind of slept on a little bit more than those top two guys okay do not fear fading high ownership in baseball okay at the end of the day if you look over your data and your analytics and your studies all day if it lands you on stacking the top team then so be it but if you can kind of sprinkle in other spots that are in fantastic spots as well that are going to garner less ownership, then that is the smartest way to play baseball, okay? This is the last sport you need to eat chalk in. You really don't have to um, unless they're really just that good of plays in their spots. You know what I mean? Um, 
But anyway, that's it. We got Chris Bassett and Lodolo as the two pitchers we're stack, uh, we're getting involved in. Spencer Steer, Juan Soto, and Dalton Varsho are the three bats to kind of get you started here. Have 4K pretty much remaining per player um, in this line. Um, as lineups drop and stuff, we might have value pop, certain 2K guys batting high in the order, or some, so, you know, whatever. Um, at shortstop, we have, uh, what's that dude's name? Volpe, who led off last game. He's not hitting the ball very well. Just because a guy hits at the top of the order doesn't necessarily mean he's going to smash. But he is only 2-9, and if he leads off again, he's interesting. He's a guy that you can consider. Like I said, though, he has not been hitting the ball very well at all. Um, so, I mean, you kind of got to put the bat on the ball um, and get on base to score any points. Um, but the interesting part is if Vol Volpe does like happen to walk or something, he's got stolen base potential. So he's a guy who can definitely steal a base at any point as well. So he's interesting for sure. Um, but that's about it, man. That's about my opinion on the slate. Um, if you're a full stack type of guy, I'd recommend like a Cincinnati, Milwaukee, San Diego. Um, probably San Diego number one, Cincinnati number two. Just off their prices, you can easily get a Cincy stack today. Um, just off their prices against a bad lefty and falter. Um, so it's at home in Cincinnati too, which is a hitter-friendly ballpark. So that's a really sneaky spot here for me. Cincinnati's very sneaky to me. If I'm full stacking, to be completely transparent, right? If I'm full stacking a team, I'm probably leaning Cincinnati uh, because everyone else is Toronto, St. Louis. I'm probably leaning Cincinnati because of their prices and stuff, and then maybe sprinkle in a couple spots from those those you know high total. Maybe sprinkle in some Cincinnati, uh, some San Diego paired up with it you know what i mean and just be different and really have crazy upside if both those offenses go crazy um in spots that they definitely could do so so that's about it y'all thank you guys for joining me as always man let's get this money five game slate let's stay hot this year we have been making crazy money in baseball this year i told y'all before the season started man last year was crazy this year's gonna be crazy just because basketball basketball is about to end and we're just gonna have baseball <clears throat> and football's not going to start for a little while. doesn't mean there's not money to be made in DFS, baby. We locking in, um, and we go to a whole nother level with baseball. Baseball's one of my favorite DFS sports, and we really have amazing seasons year in and year out. So um, uh, maybe because so many people sleep on baseball and don't play baseball DFS, so it kind of makes it even easier um, to cash in, in big ways often so i'm just excited man i'm excited to keep it going let's just keep going what we've doing been doing so far this year and let's have another amazing day y'all have a great day stay safe and i'm out peace